My 20th birthday was marked by a truly unexpected surprise from my dad, an international trip, a dream we cherished for a long time. This trip was not just any vacation, it held profound significance for me. After my mother passed away when I was seven, my father and I found solace in watching Russia movies together, a tradition that stemmed from my mother's deep affection for Russia, cinema and culture. These colourful and vibrant films were a comforting escape for us, bridging the immense gap left by her sudden passing due to a brain aneurysm at the age of 36. My mother's lifelong admiration for Russia films had been a pillar of my childhood, and my father had always promised that one day we'd visit Russia. That promise seemed distant until my birthday, when my father revealed that we were finally making the trip, a journey to celebrate our shared memories and my mother's legacy. The trip was planned just for the one of us, allowing us a chance to reconnect with our past without the interference of my stepmom and stepsister. Their absence was due to unavoidable commitments. My stepsister Ella was tackling her finals, and my stepmom Mila was submerged in a crucial office manager. Though it seemed coincidental, I suspected my dad chose the timing intentionally to avoid potential discord, as my relationships with Mila and Ella were strained. The evening of my birthday, when the trip was announced, was joyful for everyone but my stepmom and stepsister. Their displeasure was palpable, and it erupted into an argument between Mila and my dad after the guests had departed. From what I overheard, Mila felt the trip should have been postponed to include everyone. How was us? But I was relieved it wasn't. The dynamics on previous family vacations had been challenging, and I feared their presence might overshadow the sentimental value of this trip. However, just a day before we were set to depart, I discovered something horrifying. My passport had been destroyed. It was clear that this was an act of sabotage by my jealous stepmom and stepsister, intended to prevent me from embarking on this significant journey. My dad was deeply upset upon learning this, his reaction a mix of anger and disappointment over their actions. Now, we are working to resolve the situation, but the pain of this betrayal lingers. This trip was supposed to be a celebration of my heritage and a pivotal moment in my relationship with my dad, a chance to honor my mother's memory in a country she loved. Despite these challenges, I remain hopeful that we will overcome this setback and make our dream trip a reality. Seven years ago, Mila and her daughter Ella became part of our family, and initially things went smoothly. They were both pleasant to be around, and there seemed to be no issues while my father was dating Mila. However, everything changed after they got married three years ago. For reasons unknown to me, their attitudes shifted drastically. I didn't change how I acted around them, but Suddenly I found myself on the receiving end of their rudeness and mean-spirited behaviour, especially when my father wasn't around. In his presence, they would switch back to being sweet, which was confusing and distressing for me. As things got worse, I felt the need to bring this up to my dad, leading us to hold a family meeting to address these issues. Initially, Mila and Ella denied everything, but I had recorded a conversation where they were particularly harsh. Presented with this evidence, they couldn't deny their behaviour any longer. They broke down, crying, and tried to manipulate the situation by claiming they felt alienated because I hadn't fully accepted them as family. This wasn't true. I had tried to embrace them, but their treatment made it difficult to maintain a good relationship. My father was torn as Mila was the first woman he had deeply cared for since my mother's passing. He urged us to try and make it work not wanting to be caught in the middle. For his sake, I agreed to keep the peace. After the confrontation, Mila and Ella's tactics changed. They simply ignored me when my dad wasn't around, which was oddly a relief because it meant less conflict. For the past year, we maintained a facade of a happy family for my father's sake, though the underlying issues remained unresolved. Their recent actions, sabotaging my passport before a significant trip to Russia, only confirmed their true feelings. This trip was meant to be a special experience just for my dad and me, particularly meaningful as it coincided with the anniversary of my mother's death. 
It was intended as a tribute to her, exploring a country she loved, which is why my dad wanted it to be just the two of us. Mila and Ella were upset about being excluded, but given our strained relationship and their preference for a different vacation style, it was for the best. They liked relaxing in the hotel while my dad and I were more adventurous, wanting to immerse ourselves in the local culture and environment, which wouldn't have been possible with them there. Despite their feelings, this arrangement mirrored their own past trips, where they opted to travel without us for short getaways. The key difference this time was the destination and duration. Russia for 15 days, which was a significant change, but in my view, a fair decision considering the circumstances. In summary, while the dynamics in our blended family remain complex, my father has promised to address these issues after our trip. For now, our focus is on making the most of our upcoming journey to Russia, honoring my mother's memory in a place she dreamed of visiting. Returning from our vacation, I was filled with excitement and anticipation. For the past couple of days, my spirits were high and I was eagerly preparing for our trip to Russia, a place I had longed to visit. With everything packed and ready to go, our departure was just a day away. However, the evening turned into a nightmare that I hadn't seen coming. Mila and Ella, my stepmom and stepsister, had done the unthinkable. They burned my passport. It was around 7 p.m. when I realized my passport was missing. I had been organising my travel documents when I noticed its absence. In a frantic search that turned the house upside down, it was nowhere to be found. After nearly an hour of searching, Mila and Ella casually walked into my room, feigning concern. They asked if I was missing something, and despite sensing something was off, I told them about my missing passport. Without a moment's hesitation, Mila threw what remained of it onto my bed. A charred and unrecognisable mess, completely unusable for travel. The look of satisfaction on their faces as they watched my shocked reaction was chilling. I felt a cold numbness wash over me, but I was determined not to give them the pleasure of seeing me break down. After they left, I locked myself in my room and allowed myself a few minutes to cry, overwhelmed by the betrayal. During this time, my dad was out shopping for the trip. I texted him immediately, explaining what had happened and sent him a photo of the ruined passport. He rushed home, and I could hear him confronting Mila and Ella as soon as he arrived. His anger was palpable as he called them out on their actions, rejecting their weak excuses outright. They tried to claim the passport had accidentally caught fire due to a carelessly discarded cigarette, a blatant lie, as I don't smoke. As the confrontation escalated downstairs, I decided it was time to intervene. Joining them, my presence seemed to be the catalyst for my dad's next actions. He retrieved some documents from his office and handed them to Ella, whose face dropped as she read them. Before she could react further, my dad tore them up in front of her. I later learned these were the papers for a student loan that he had agreed to co-sign to help Ella pay for college a significant opportunity she would now lose as a consequence of their actions. In a decisive move, my father ordered Mila and Ella out of our house. Despite their protests and pleas for reconsideration, he stood firm. The line had been crossed, and he was resolute in his decision to protect me and uphold our dignity. The trip might have been delayed, but the lesson they learned about respect and consequences would last a lifetime. After they left the house, Ella and Mila began bombarding me with messages pleading for forgiveness. Ella, particularly remorseful, begged me to convince my dad to reconsider co-signing her student loan, promising to make amends for her actions. She argued that my dad, with his stable financial standing, would have an easier time managing the loan payments than her own mother could. Despite their apologies, they insisted they had no idea about the repercussions their actions would bring, claiming they felt excluded and less like a part of the family. I did respond to one of their messages to remind them that they too had taken many trips just as mother and daughter, questioning why it was deemed unfair for me to have a similar experience with my father, especially considering my mother's absence and our plans to honour her memory on this trip. Ella's father is still in her life, 
albeit in a limited capacity, whereas I lost my mother years ago and this trip was meant to honour her memory. It felt unjust for Ella to ask for my help after what she did, and I firmly believed that the consequences she faced were justified, stripping her of any right to ask for forgiveness or favours from me. Yet, despite my resolve, I hesitated to block her. A part of me felt guilty, pondering whether excluding them from our 15-day trip to Russia was unfair, given that their own outings were short and local. This led me to second-guess whether our decision to go without them was as justified as I initially felt. Before this incident, we hadn't planned to involve the police as we wanted to avoid legal entanglements over what seemed like an internal family matter, though clearly malicious. As for my own life, I had taken a gap year after high school to explore my interests, particularly in journalism, and I was preparing to start college soon. Fortunately, my grandparents had set up a college fund for me, so financial concerns were not an issue on my end, unlike for Ella, whose college funding was uncertain due to differing views between her parents on financial responsibility. As it stands, my father and I were forced to cancel our trip to Russia since I no longer had a passport. Instead, we spent the day at home, revisiting old films that brought us comfort in the past, which did help lift my spirits. Based on advice from friends and a deeper reflection on my feelings, heavily influenced by the loss of my mother and the emotional turmoil it brought, I decided to block Ella and Mila. I realised that feeling sorry for them was unnecessary and it was more important to protect my peace and focus on healing from the recent upheaval. Ultimately, this ordeal reinforced the importance of setting boundaries and not letting guilt manipulate my decisions, especially when dealing with family dynamics complicated by unresolved grief and betrayal. Since that late night realization, I've decided to block Mila and Ella. They've tried to reach out multiple times, but I'm not responding. They betrayed my trust, and I'm not about to let them think their constant apologies can undo the hurt they caused. They deserve the consequences of their actions. Today, something significant happened. My dad came home from work and told me he had filed for divorce. This led us to a very overdue conversation. Our last family meeting, where we tried to address the changes in Mila and Ella's behaviour after the wedding, turned out to be pointless. Rather than improving, they completely withdrew from me, which isn't how family should function. My dad confessed that he had been selfish, always putting his desires first. But he realised that staying with Mila wasn't right for any of us. Despite his feelings for her, it became clear that she didn't see me as part of her family. He suspected that she felt threatened by our close bond, fearing she and Ella would always come second to me. This might have fueled her resentment and insecurity, leading to the shift in how they treated me post-marriage. He admitted he'd ignored these signs initially because it wasn't directly harming anyone. However, after the passport incident, he couldn't overlook their behaviour anymore. We weren't acting like a family, we were just pretending, and it was time to stop. He had spoken to his lawyer and officially started the divorce proceedings that day. He apologised for the pain his choices had caused me, and we shared a long, meaningful hug. Some might question his actions, but to me, he's always been more than just a good father. Yes, he made mistakes, but he also did so much right by me. I've chosen to forgive him because the love and support he's shown outweighs his errors. I love him deeply and always will. I believe Mila was served with the divorce papers today my father returned from work earlier than usual and has since sequestered himself in his office, occasionally raising his voice as if he's arguing with someone on the phone. I'm not sure what's unfolding, but I plan to check on him once he comes out. Whatever is happening, it's another step in reshaping our lives and hopefully moving towards a more peaceful, honest future. Ever since my dad got home from work today, he hasn't said a word and I've been anxious about what's going on. It's been five days since he filed for divorce, and given his mood, I suspect Mila was served with the divorce papers today. That's the only explanation I can think of for his unusual behaviour. I haven't had any contact with Mila or Ella since I blocked them, 
and they haven't tried to reach out in any other way, which is probably for the best, because I still have strong feelings about the whole ordeal. We had planned to go to Russia, but now that trip will have to wait until after the divorce is finalised. With college starting in a few months, I'm not sure when we'll find the time, but I'm hopeful we'll get there eventually. My dad emerged from his office a couple of hours ago and explained why he'd been yelling on the phone. Neela had called him, threatening to make up a bunch of lies to challenge the divorce and ruin him. He had been caught off guard by her call while at work and didn't manage to record her threats then. However, when he got home, he was prepared and recorded their conversation. He warned her that if she tried to defame him during the divorce, he would have evidence to counter her claims. This confrontation seemed to intimidate her. Dad thinks he's handled it well. He assured me that once the divorce is over, we're going to Russia. That's a promise he made. I'm just hoping that the divorce proceedings go smoothly without much resistance from Mila, especially since I still have proof of her and her daughter's actions against me. It's crucial that they don't escalate things further for their own sake. That the divorce was finalised a couple of weeks ago. My dad handled everything brilliantly and Mila didn't get anything from us in the settlement, which is how it should be. We retained what's ours and she got nothing extra despite her attempts at gaining a significant settlement, including alimony and the child support. Now, my dad and I are actively preparing for our trip to Russia. I have a new passport and everything is finally falling into place. I'm incredibly excited about the trip and just really happy about how things turned out. 